In this video I'm going to build an Arduino on a breadboard. You might do this if you want to test a design before you bring it to a PCB. This is my final circuit implementation and I'm going to get to this by building on a few steps uh, through this video. The first thing you need to do is to set up your power supply. And my power supply is based on a circuit that I've set up in a previous video. It uses a voltage regulator, an LM7805 or KA7805, along with a resettable fuse, a diode just in case, a switch, a power switch to allow us to turn on and off the power, and it also comes with uh, an LED just to indicate that the power supply is on or off. So here's my Arduino board, and what we're going to do is just implement the most basic circuit possible, which is to use an LED across pin 13 and ground. Because there's a current limiting resistor built into pin 13, this gives us a very simple circuit to use. The code for this implementation is the Blink example, directly from the Arduino CC website. You'll see that we're looping and writing a high, followed by a low, to pin 13. So the 18 mega chip that we're going to use is we're going to take it directly from the Arduino board. So we need to use, uh, first thing we need to do is to disconnect the power. And then we need to use a screwdriver, and preferably a flathead screwdriver, and place it in underneath the, the, uh, the IC. Just lever it out a little bit just to try and get a bit of movement, otherwise you'll bend the pins and do this from both sides. So once we've taken the IC out, you can see that we have an empty socket on the Arduino board. And we're going to use this board later on without the IC present to communicate and upload code to the IC on the breadboard. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is make sure that our power supply is working. So here I'm just checking that the power supply is off before I begin wiring. And I'm going to connect the 80 Mega 328 IC in with pin 1 at, pin, at row 11 on the breadboard. This just means that the numbering is consistent. So pin 7 on the IC is row 17 on the breadboard. Next we need to connect our ground and VCC connections to the 80 Mega. And you'll see that the pinout for the 80 Mega is quite different than what you would have seen on your prototyping shield. So pin 8 has to be connected to ground. You'll see we've connected that in. Pin 22, also on the, on the right hand side of the diagram, also has to be connected to ground, which I've made available at the top of the board as well. Okay, so that sits in there nicely. Now we have to connect the VCC connections to the Arduino as well. And you can see that the first one is on pin 7 of the left hand side of the figure. So we need to connect the short red wire in from our 5 volt line into pin 7. Okay, there we go. Okay. And the next pin, if you look at our figure again, we can see that pin 21 and pin 20 on the right hand side of the figure we have our AVCC on the Arduino which also needs to go to VCC and our A ref it's it's no harm if we also connect that that's our analog reference we also have to connect that into um, our 5 volt supply as well so you can see that's that one connected that's pin 21 or A ref pin and finally we just need to do the other power pin which is pin 20 our AVCC which is our, our, our final VCC. So with those five wires we've now powered the, the Arduino. The final thing we also have to do is we have to provide um, a connection on pin 1. Pin 1 is the reset pin of the Arduino and it's active low. So we just want to make sure that the Arduino isn't constantly resetting itself over and over again. So I'm just going to use a 10k resistor here connected between pin 1 and VCC to ensure that we have a high at pin 1. As we've seen in earlier videos on flip-flops and counters, digital circuits often need a clock pulse. Microcontrollers are no different. For this we're going to attach a quartz crystal, as shown here, to the oscillator pins of the AT Mega microcontroller. Quartz crystals resonate at very accurate and predefined frequencies. Here I'm showing crystals that resonate at 16 MHz and 20 MHz. Quartz crystals are packaged in common frequencies of 20 MHz, 16 MHz, 10 MHz and so on. Inside the metal housing is a small piece of quartz crystal 
that has been cut precisely to a size that vibrates at one of these frequencies. There is an internal oscillator within the AT Mega 328, so it can generate its own clock cycle if you're using an appropriate bootloader. The oscillator is implemented on silicon. Unfortunately, it's not that accurate and it's limited to 8 MHz on this processor. Since we can drive this device at up to 20 MHz, an external device is preferable. There are two options for this external device, a crystal or a resonator. A crystal costs about 60 cent while a resonator costs about 20 cent. A resonator has an accuracy of about plus minus a half percent, which is better than the onboard oscillator, but could cause problems if we're communicating between two Arduinos for a long period. A crystal has an accuracy of about six parts per million at 30 degrees Celsius, so that's plus minus 96 hertz on a 16 million hertz crystal, or about 0.0006%. Just to put it in context, that's about plus minus 190 seconds in a year, whereas a resonator will be out by about plus minus 1.8 days. So that's why quartz crystals are used in watches. Unfortunately, crystals also require load capacitors. These capacitors allow the oscillator to begin oscillating. You can leave them out, but it is possible that the crystal may not oscillate. The resonator is a piece of ceramic that oscillates at common frequencies, and while cheaper, it isn't as accurate as the crystal, but it has the advantage that the load capacitors are built in, and that's why it's a 3-pin device. We have to attach the quartz crystal to the two oscillator pins of the AT Mega. These are pins 9 and 10. A crystal is a purely passive device that requires external drivers for it to oscillate, or for it to be an oscillator. The circuitry to convert the crystal into an oscillator is built into the AT Mega. We also have to connect the two load capacitors, so we're connecting these to the pins of the crystal and to ground. These capacitors have the marking 22J on the surface. 22 with no more third digit, which is the multiplier, means that we're in picofarads. So 22 picofarads and J represents a tolerance of plus minus 5%. Now we need to add in the circuitry that we want to drive. And you'll remember that it was an LED connected to pin 13. Now pin 13 or digital pin 13 is actually connected to 80 mega pin 19, PB5. We also have to add in a current limiting resistor. This was provided on our Arduino shield, but now that we're off the shield, we need to provide that ourselves. So if we turn on the power, we can see that the LED flashes on for one second, off for one second. So we now have the exact same functionality as we had when we were using the shield, but we've removed the shield completely and we're just working only on the breadboard. Because this AT Mega 328 can be driven at up to 20 MHz, we can replace the 16 MHz crystal with a 20 MHz crystal. So here I'm connecting it across the oscillator pins again. And you can see that when we power on the circuit that it behaves exactly as it did when we had the 16 MHz crystal attached. It doesn't flash any faster. And this is because the delay that we have in our code delays for 100 milliseconds and this is irrespective of whether it's a 16 or a 20 megahertz crystal. Next thing I'm going to do is to add in a proper reset button into the circuit. I've removed the pull-up resistor that was on pin 1 connected to the reset pin of the AT Mega and I'm placing a little momentary push button into the circuit. This push button is going to be grounded so that when you press the button it's normally open. You can see on the diagram it's a normally open button called reset and when the button is open the 10k pull-up resistor connects pin 1 to plus 5 volts. When the normally open switch is pressed, so when the momentary button is pressed, it connects the pin 1 directly to ground and this will cause the circuit to reset because you'll notice in the diagram in the pin diagram that it's got reset bar is the way it's set up. So I connect in the finally finish off by connecting in the uh, pull-up resistor and then we can check that the circuit is working again by turning it on and you should see that when I turn it on that the circuit behaves exactly as before and then when we press the reset button you'll see that there's a slight flicker in the LED but the circuit continues again to work as before. 
So you can see that our Arduino on a breadboard circuit is working perfectly. Our LED is flashing on for one second, off for one second as we'd expect. The problem is that we may want to change the code that's on the AT Mega. The way that we could do this is to take the IC out and place it back into the shield and reprogram the AT Mega and then place it back in the breadboard. But the problem with that is we stand a good chance of damaging the pins if we do that. So what I'm going to do is connect in and change the way that the circuit works. The first thing I have to do is to replace the 20 MHz crystal with a 16 MHz crystal because of the configuration that's on my board. I'm going to write some new code so that I can show you how we upload this new code onto our AT Mega without removing it from the breadboard. So I'm changing the delay very simply from one second down to a tenth of a second. So it says delay 100 milliseconds in our loop function. So on for 100 milliseconds, off for 100 milliseconds. I disconnect the power from the breadboard, which is very important because I'm actually going to power this circuit now directly from the Arduino shield. Importantly, please note that there is no 80 mega chip on the shield. You'll see that it's just a blank socket. So we connect the plus VCC and ground pins into the rails, power rails of our breadboard. And now we're in a position where we can power it directly from the Arduino. We connect the OREX and TX pins into the Arduino as well. The OREX is the green wire running from pin 0 of the Arduino shield to pin 2 of the AT Mega. The white pin or the white wire is TX which is running from pin 1 of the Arduino to pin 3 of the AT Mega. Finally and very importantly you also have to connect the reset pin otherwise it won't be able to fin finalize the programming uh, part. So the reset pin is connected from the Arduino to the reset pin which is pin 1 of the AT Mega. Please connect it after the pull-up resistor and the switch so it goes directly to pin 1. So here you can see I've plugged in the USB cable and power has been provided to the AT Mega through the PC. So you can see that our circuit is working as before. Now I'm going to upload the sketch to the Arduino on the breadboard and you can see that the LED flashes rapidly as the application is uploading to the AT Mega. Then once the new application is uploaded you'll see that the LED flashes for one tenth of a second on one tenth of a second off and it's working exactly as before. Finally we can disconnect the Arduino shield away from our breadboard and you can see that when we power this circuit and turn it on you can see that it now has a new application where it's flashing every one tenth of a second instead of every second. So hopefully that video has shown you how you can implement an Arduino on a breadboard and use it for your projects.